Okay, so I uh, wanted to do this video before I get uh, get going here. I had to warm my truck up, and so I cut it back off here so it wouldn't make noise. But I will switch this on real quick, and uh, that's just my brake mitigation system. And it's um, you can see it it it, it said radar a second ago. People don't believe it shoots out radar. It shoots out radar out of the front of the truck and tells me how fast the car in front of me is going and if I don't hit the brakes it'll hit the brakes um, and it does uh, give me a warning of you know so many feet ahead of time that kind of stuff it's a safety feature so people love it people hate it you know I'm fine with it anyways so what I wanted to show you know it's it's really hard to do a video on something that you hate <laughs> But somebody asked me about it, and they're trying to learn, and so I'm like, okay, I'll do my best to explain to you how to load um, by it. Uh, so I'll just, I'll give you, I'll give you a second here if you can guess anything on this dash that I hate. <laughs> I guess uh, it's it's not the radio, <laughs> but and it's not the brake mitigation system. Uh, and I'll go ahead and tell you, it's not this. Okay, for the fifth wheel release, even though some people don't like the idea of that. Here's what I got going on here. Basically, it's uh, the pressure gauge that people, they're using it to load by, which really, it's not accurate, people. It's so far off, it's not even funny. Um, it's always, you know, where it's going to be, depending on, if your axles are the same, it's going to be in the same spot, but it's, it's never trustworthy enough to load by. Uh, they have a digital meter out that you can trust. This thing is so vague, it goes like 25, then 50 PSI, then 100's way over here. So so basically, um, you know, 25, 50, 75, 100. Basically, this right here, just going straight up to a number, It's if you're looking at it this way, from this angle, it's going to be off. It's going to look like it's 49. If you're looking at it this way, it's going to look like it's 51. If you're looking at it straight on, so in a nutshell, the reason I hate that gauge is this. I used to work for a company. We were loading tankers under a rack. And it would have been fine except that I did not know the truck I was driving had been wrecked before and that there was currently an air leak out of the air system that uh, off the gauge that basically out of the rear the rear seal was leaking in a spot that I had it checked out and finally found and that this gauge was inaccurate because of that it would load and it would just keep going keep going keep going so if I'm like standing out of the truck I'm thinking oh it's gonna be fine it's just still continuously going um never did stop so i had to watch it until it was at a certain place and then tell them to stop loading and even though they stopped the flow it would keep going and going and going that's when i started getting loaded right until that point um i was getting overloaded or even if i had to turn around and come back to get more on it wouldn't be accurate because that thing would keep going could not load by the gauge and that meant, you know, on, on those loads I was hauling, I was trying to haul local, I was trying to haul four and five loads a day, but because I have to keep going up under the rack and everything else, and there went my light there, <laughs> because I, that's, that's why it was difficult to do this, because I kept having to load under the rack and everything, um, it made it impossible to load by the gauge. And everybody else was not having a problem. That's because everybody else didn't have a truck that had been wrecked before and had a leak and that, you know. So it made a situation where I made less money. That's why I hate that gauge. I don't think it should be trusted or used for loading purposes, but there's places that do. So I was basically used as a guinea pig, and it cost me money. And, um, of course, I was at a company where everybody was kind of cutthroat there everybody was out for themselves and so uh, 
they were fine if I couldn't haul those extra loads and they could and that kind of stuff. So it put me where I wasn't able to haul any of their other loads. Um, basically it was a no win situation. They have digital gauges that you can trust and they've even got some of those, I think at that company. Now, I don't know. It was, it was all, uh, it was a disaster all because of that gauge. So if you got any kind of air leak and you're trying to load by this gauge, it's going to keep going. It mattered which way you're looking at it. And that one actually stuck out further than this did. The glass did. So it was more inaccurate depending on your angle. Um, it's not, it's not fair to ask a driver to have to figure out what 80,000 pounds is by using this gauge. This gauge will give you a general idea if you're legal or if you're um, overweight. Um, you can't, like I said, you can't trust it. Uh, but I will explain it because somebody asked me about it. That's why I hate doing this video though because I was done wrong by a company that put me in a truck and, and it was making it so I could only haul, you know, three to four loads instead of four to five loads. I was spending more time under the rack getting back under the rack and it was hard to get back around there uh, and dangerous because it was on a hill you run the risk of uh, turning over an 18 wheeler tanker um, just rough stuff you know um, and they won't act like it's your fault you know that's that's not fair to a driver so let's get this clean back off and I'll show you what I'm gonna do basically um, Okay, well, in, in order to to get it cleaned right, like the way I had it before I started touching it, um, we'll hit it with a shot of Windex and uh, get a paper towel on the situation. But yeah, um, you, you can't expect a driver to load by one of these. Um, that's just not right. And, uh, but I got a driver that's telling me, hey, when I'm in the middle of nowhere, can I get a, a, a idea? Oh, well, absolutely. You know, um, your idea is that you're going to have to first, you're going to have to load a legal load that's right at 80,000 pounds, and you're going to have to know where your pins are at. And then you're going to have to make a mark. Well, I'm using this right here. You can buy these packs here of whiteout. It's a double pack, you know. So this one here comes out. Uh, I, what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to leave enough room for the top of the gauge. You can still see the top of the gauge up there, okay? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a line down with this. And if it'll drag up to where the, the tape starts then I'll be able to make it. There we go. Okay, you see I just made a line. The needle sticks above it. That's gonna be, because right now I'm 75,000, that's gonna be 75,000. And you can write on this with a pen. Okay, just a regular, you know, I'm, I'm using, I'm using these, um, ultra round stick Bix, you know, uh, just regular pen. So you can write, you can make a mark, whatever makes you happy exact, you know what I'm saying? Cause you can't write on glass, but this was the solution I come up with. And then for this right here, that's 50, there's 60. And I'm gonna go, they're having fun. I'm gonna go right here and make a mark. Comes down to that one. Okay, so what I've got here that looks like positions on a clock at this point, and I'll probably cut this off right across here and scrape that off. Um, basically, what I've got here is an idea, a rough idea. Um, should you load by these? I would say definitely not. You can't trust it. You know, you, like I said, anything could happen where you'd have a leak. You could, uh, but if you're in the middle of nowhere and you're wanting to um, 
man, that's really still showing up on the camera, isn't it? There's nothing really on there. If you're if you're wanting to get a rough rough idea um, of where you're at weight wise, you know, um, that should help. So, um, I guess I bumped that out of the way. Um, you know, you, you can make a mark when you figure out what 80,000 pounds is, I would suggest over in here, I would suggest that you make a mark that's is as perfect as you can going up to the head of that. And like I said, I'm going to shave this back a bit and he's only be, only be here so you can see the needle past it easy. Um, but, uh, basically, um, and mine hasn't moved. Okay. Cause I don't have any air leaks on this newer truck, but, uh, if your rear, it's, if your rear seals, um, or even the breather, if, if somehow where the air goes back there, um, is leaking out in any kind of way, even a small way, um, it will throw this thing way off. So that's why I say I don't trust it. But somebody asked me about it, and so this is this is the best way I know how to do is to make a mark, um, and figure out like this is under eighty thousand, and you're good, and this is right at eighty thousand, and you know anything over that you're going to be over in here, you're going to be overweight where, wherever it winds up. Uh, so I would say, say about sixty three, I think it was told for some guy's truck. It depends on how much your truck weighs and everything. You're going to have to get a legal load and do this and set yourself up ahead of time so um, that's it you know um, I don't know what else to say except uh, to me that gauge is a general idea they got digital gauges that you can trust and you can even have one put here um, you know there's room across here for all kinds of stuff uh, so you, you could put in a digital gauge or one that even sticks here um, I think they cost about, I don't know, maybe $600, $700. You look in the back of the magazines. Um, but since you do have this, you can utilize it. But like I said, it's it's not a cat scale, people. Um, you can, some people are going to say, I load by mine every day. Um, you know, if you do, that's fine. I don't trust it because I had a bad one and I tried to load by it every day. And it was messing me up bad. So, um, you know, it's it's all in how you want to do your situation. I don't know how far you are away from the truck stop and how far that is away from the DOT scales. Um, but if this is wrong and the DOT scale is right, it's going to cost you a ticket. So do I trust it? No. Will it give you an idea if you're ridiculously overweight and they definitely got to do something about it if you're way over in here? Yes. So, uh, this is what you could do just to help yourself. Um, to give you an idea. And, like at the clock, you just check and see what time it is. <laughs> is it time to get them to take some of that stuff back off your truck? <laughs> Maybe. You know. So, that's it. That's all I got on that. And I'm going to relax and have a cigar. And I'm going to get going again. And y'all take it easy. I'm just trying to teach what I know here. But somebody asked about this. I was hesitant in doing the video. Don't like the gauge for that reason. And um, that's, that's the best way I know how to describe it is. It's something that is a general idea. It's not exact. Because it depends on which angle you're looking through the glass. It depends on what truck you got. How heavy you are in the first place. It depends on where your trailer axles are if you have sliding axles. And it depends on if you have any kind of an air leak that you may not even know about. Or just wheel seals that are leaking. That the, it's going to go through there. You know. So. There you go. I hope this was helpful in some kind of way. But it does help to make a mark on here and use it as a general idea. That's it. I'm out. That's all I got for you. Peace.